Well, we know that a good start, it's not good enough. We got to keep on moving with it. You got the momentum, you want to keep on moving. You don't want to lose that momentum. The Lord gave us a good start, and you want to, keep, you want to build on that good start. 1 Corinthians 2.9 is where I'm going to be at if you want to follow along. As I call us higher. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Say, my focus here is what God's doing. <clears throat> this is the work that he is doing, which God hath prepared. Who caused salvation? Who, who did this, brother? Did we wake up one morning and think about this salvation that we really need? God did this. <laughs> Why? He did it for them that love him to have an inheritance that God has. He's, he's the one that's given this inheritance. This is the work that God's doing. I want to encourage you, brethren, that you don't lose heart. There's times where it can get, it can get overwhelming, and you can, you can lose heart if you don't see who's in charge of this thing. Before God could give us an inheritance, we had to be taken out of darkness mm -hmm. to be able to see what God's doing. Could we take ourselves out of darkness? That is the work that God did. It will give you confidence to see this is the work that God is doing. Now, this isn't something that we have to do. We don't have enough strength for it. It doesn't matter if we want to or not. We don't have enough strength. We don't have enough wisdom. We don't have enough understanding. All this had to be given to us by God. We needed to be saved from darkness. The power of darkness was holding us. And we didn't even know it. See, first of all, before you even get out of something, you've got to know that you're in it. God had to reveal that to us. He had to show us that we were in darkness and that we had to get out, and he was the one who was going to do it. Amen. God had to move us or transfer us from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. God did this. Only he could do it. It wasn't by our strength or by our wisdom. So the focus is God. This is what he did. We see that the main thing is not man or what man did or what man is doing, but what God did, what he is doing, and what he's going to do. <clears throat> the work we do and are doing must be done for sure. I don't want to lighten that, you know, take that away, that we must, we have something to do. But we did not start this work and we cannot finish it. We, have somebody, we had to have somebody to start it and somebody that could finish it. Somebody that could do it. If at any point <clears throat> we get bogged down with us being the main focus, with what we are doing, what men are doing, it won't take long, brethren, for us to lose steam. Us to lose the momentum that the Lord has given us. See, we started out with great momentum. When we were born again, when we came up with all that water, we baptized, we had this momentum that was, this, was we were pursuing the things of God. We wanted it. We loved it. We felt clean, refreshed. Now, how does people lose that? Because we, I mean, come on, we know it happens every day. We know that this happens over and over again, that somebody, you saw them one day when they first started, and they were just excited for the Lord. They had this, they had this enthusiasm, and then all of a sudden it kind of just tapered off. Was it because they were seeing God clearly? No, I'm telling you, brothers, because they weren't seeing God clearly. They weren't seeing who was in charge. They weren't seeing that God started it and God's going to finish it. They weren't seeing things rightly, brethren. This is why it takes effort mm -hmm. to continue to shine up these jewels. It takes effort to continue to see what God is doing. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't, you got you to gotta pursue this. Sadly, we see this time and time again, people falling away. <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be this way, brethren. Things to think about 
what God has done, let's think about this. Christ gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Galatians 1.4. God did this. huh? He started it. And he's continuing with it. He's given us the power and strength that we need right now. You didn't, we didn't just end up here because of, we had so much strength. It was because of the work that God is doing. God who began the work in them would perform it until the day of Christ, Philippians 1.6. The work that had to be done continues to be done it's because of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We did not choose God. He chose us. Doesn't that give you confidence right there? That He chose you. And he began to work. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. 1 Thessalonians 1.4 God chose you, and with God, no matter what happens in the world, you will not lose. As long as you're with God. We have a promise of eternal life from God. How could we even know about eternal life if it were not for God? In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Titus 1-2. God promised this. This wasn't a man. We know men break their promises every day. We've got kings and uh, officials and leaders. Hey, they promise you the, the, the stars and the sky and the sun, and they, the, one day and the next day, that promise has been broken. Just a matter of time, the promise is broken. God cannot lie. His promises will not be broken. It doesn't matter what happens here. It doesn't matter what men say. Men make promises every day. They'll be happy to make you any promise you want to hear. But God, this is not how God is. When we consider it's not our righteousness that we have to be saved, but the righteousness of God, 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, we can have confidence. We can have confidence that the strength that we have today is going to continue all the way to the end. We don't have to look to men for our confidence, but the one that chose us, and that's God. The one who sent, sent his son to show us the way. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which hath sent him. Amen. John 5.23 God sent Jesus to save you, and to keep you, and to show you that you are, with him, you will not fail. As long as you're with God, as long as you're seeing these things clearly, and as long as you're coming to Christ, he's not going to deny you. He's not going to turn you away. He's not going to come up short. He's not going to have just enough resources and not enough. He's got the resources to take you all the way. Without God, we could not even see to come to Jesus. How did you know that you needed Jesus? How did you know that you needed to come to Jesus? Because God therefore said, I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto you of my Father. John 6, 65. See, that's, the Lord gave that to you. You have it because he gave it to you. That's the kind of God we're talking about. God is drawing us to his son Jesus Christ he is the truth God is the only true he's the only one that has truth we can depend on him see Satan all he's got is a lie he can twist things and make it look real good but it's a lie but God he's the only one with the truth so brother here we go if you run to Jesus he will not turn you away for I come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 6, 38. So, brethren, tonight, this morning, as we continue on, let us look to Jesus. Let us remember with confidence that this is something that God gave you. That you're not running on your own steam because you know you're going to run out. 
but to look to the, the one who gave you the strength, the one that's going to give you the endurance, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray, brother, as we continue on. Amen. Sister Betty is going to come up and lead us in singing. We look forward to that.